Hello world, I'm Attila. Today I will talk about the artificial intelligence, a modern approach book. And this was a book about artificial intelligence. And uh, this is uh, the second episode of my uh, series on artificial intelligence. I will link the playlist in the video description and it's on the screen now. So I wanted to talk a little bit about artificial intelligence and learn about it and share it with you because artificial intelligence will be very important in the future and this book is uh, referred to as the AI Bible so I thought that I would give it a try but it's a very long book like 1000 pages so I won't be able to convey every message and every meaning of the book I will only share the things that I um, learned from it and um, like a basic uh, understanding to gain to so that you will be able to gain a basic understanding of the book and, uh, the book concentrates on the general principles of uh, rational agents and the components for construct constructing them so an agent are like an intelligent thing that able to make decisions and uh, do things and the rational action is the best possible action in the situation and uh, an agent's action depends on its past experience and its observation of the current world so we are agent as well agents as well we have a uh, pre-existing knowledge and pre-existing beliefs and we also observe the world around us and uh, make decisions based on this. And uh, before an agent can uh, start searching for solutions, a goal must be identified and uh, of this action and a well-defined problem must be formulated because uh, without a problem and without a goal, we, we can't really solve an action. And uh, AIs are very powerful today and they will continue to be even more powerful in the future because they have large available data sets for them. So for example, Google search is used by almost 4 billion people. That's more than half of the world. It's quite crazy. So that's why it's the probably the most powerful algorithm. AIs were able to beat humans in games and uh, when AIs are playing a game, they are usually constructing a game tree. And the tree is like a set of all the possible uh, outcomes and uh, decisions. And in every branch of a tree, there is a decision. And um, the problem is that it's usually not feasible to consider the whole game tree. Because for example, in a game like chess or go, this game tree is huge and uh, so when we are evaluating this uh, game tree we need to cut off at some point so we need to stop and uh, evaluate whether that uh, the utility of that current state whether that uh, um, branch that you are on is worth uh, like going through and uh, because of this, and uh, not because of this, but uh, humans still have an edge in games with inc incomplete information, like poker, because the AI just can't know the, the other person that well. And uh, intelligent agents need uh, knowledge about the world in order to reach good decisions. And uh, this knowledge is contained in agents in the form of sentences in a knowledge representation language that uh, are stored in a knowledge base. And, uh, this knowledge representation language should be declarative, compositional, expressive and context independent. And uh, so this is like a knowledge representational language. We have some kind of things like this in ourselves, but we don't really understand this because uh, we don't really understand the human brain just yet. 
No, when we are calculating plans on how to solve a problem, we we shouldn't just uh, take cons- into consideration the time or the best effect of that plan, but we also must uh, take the resources into consideration, like the I don't know resources that you can touch or money or time. And, uh, we have, like, we live in an uncertain world with a lot of complex calculations, and uh, with these complex calculations, probability theory helps us to deal with uncertainty. And um, sometimes, when you are solving a problem, uh, the solution is to find more information before making a decision, and the value of that information is uh, defined as the expected improvement in utility compared with making decision without the information. So you should uh, pursue like uh, the new information if you would be able to make a better decision with uh, knowing that information. And then it talks about learning and the learning can be different based on the based on the nature of the agent and the available feedback. Uh, if the available feedback provided a correct answer for an example input, it's called supervised learning. So normally we have a data set of an example and the correct solution. And uh, if like we put that input into an algorithm and that will output something, then we compare the output of that uh, output and the good solution, and then we will be able to like, calculate whether the algorithm calculated, like how, did, how well did it perform, and this is called supervised learning. And uh, there are two kinds of mm, machine uh, processes. The first is classic classification and it's when you have to predict a label. So for example, your mind is now uh, detecting labels that I am a human, uh, this is a bed uh, behind me and that's a picture right there. So it is detecting all kinds of labels and uh, the other kind of uh, process is uh, regression and it's about predicting a quantity. So, for example, I don't know, your mind currently is uh, is looking, not looking forward, but it's predicting the length of the video, how much uh, time, I don't know. For example, if you jump, like uh, your mind will predict, predict things like um, how big would you jump and uh, things like this. And cumulative learning is a learning in which uh, learning agents improve their learning ability as they acquire more knowledge. And, uh, it, so this is far, very powerful. Then it talked about natural language processing. And uh, the two biggest success of uh, natural language process- processing was uh, speech recognition and uh, machine translation. So machine machine translation is when you translate text or speech from one language to another. And the success of these two is because the large available data sets, because uh, these two processes are done in the wild, like by natural people. So we talk with each other and things like that. But uh, in contrast, like uh, parsing sentences have been less successful because uh, there is not a large available data set and uh, because parsing is uh, not useful in and of itself. So perception is a very easy task for us. You, very, you easily recognize that I am a human. But uh, this is difficult for machines. 
The robots are intelligent agents that uh, have sensors to perceive the world and the effectors to, so that they can modify the environment and they can apply force to that environment. And uh, the difficulty of robotics is uh, object recognition, mapping the environment and locating yourself. So mapping the environment is like creating a map of the environment and locate yourself in that environment. And, uh, then it talks about two kinds of artificial intelligence. First is the weak AI or narrow AI. And it's when an AI only does one task. So for example, the YouTube uh, algorithm only recommends you videos and that it's solely one task that it can do. And the strong AI or general AI is when uh, it have like a general intelligence. So we can use our intelligence to do many things like reading, uh, recommending a book to another person, learning or playing, things like that. And then it concludes that uh, AI will massively change the life of humanity but for bet better or for worse is the question and uh, it closed with a thought or a quote from uh, Alan Turing, the adventure of the Turing test. The Turing test is a, is a test when uh, you, you differentiate whether an AI, like when you if an AI passed the Turing test, it means that a human can't like differentiate whether that the AI is a human or an AI. So the quote is that uh, we can see only a short distance ahead, but we can see that much remains to be done. So that was beautiful. It was it was a very interesting book. I will continue to learn more about AI. I'm going to neural networks and things like that. So you should subscribe to my channel or follow my podcast if you are interested. I also have a Twitter account. You can reach me there. So thank you for watching. Bye bye.